Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chair Yoga. Uh, today is the spring equinox. Um, we used to always call that the first day of spring, and it's a it's kind of an auspicious time. Um, there's a new moon tomorrow in this spring equinox. So on that planetary level, I guess there's just some reason for um, you know bringing some attention to that. Typically, the um, from a yoga perspective, this is a time for spring cleaning. So it's like the kind of practices we're going to probably see this week across the, you know, across the country as far as um, adherence to this time of year will be detox or cleansing kind of poses. Those are the twists and the folds, uh, just to give you an, in, in a nutshell. So that's my idea today is you're going to see a little bit more of folding, folding forward and a little bit more in twisting. So we can kind of take part in that idea of what a spring cleaning in the body and in the mind uh, could look like. So let's begin with just um, finding our seat. Um, we are actually going to start uh, the asana practice standing up. But for now, as we just start to transition and bring ourselves into the awareness of that we're here and now in our yoga class, you know, just have a nice good sit where you feel like you're sitting far enough forward that your feet are grounded and you can feel you know start to begin to feel your shifting as you bring your awareness into your breathing so start by closing your eyes as soon as you're comfortable with that closing your eyes and just deepening the breath maybe you take a cleansing breath or two just to kind of get settled that deeper breath and let it blow out of your mouth that kind of thing but then let it settle. See if you can bring yourself to a point where the breath is moving through the nostrils, if possible. If you can breathe in and out, nostril breathing, that'd be a good way to start. If you can't, just don't worry about it. Just breathe in a way that feels natural and you can start to feel your transition. You can feel yourself coming into the body. And then relax, relax your face. Certain areas that you know um, are kind of pockets of tension for you, go there, go there in the, that part of your body and just, you know, give, maybe you bring your hand to your shoulders or your neck or wherever that might be that you hold tension to, you know, often, you know, that you just say not, you know, let's just let that go. We're just going to let that go. Relax, release as much as you're able, just as much as you're able to do. So let's begin this practice in this, you know, sense of compassion and ease. And then just feel your body um, in its appreciation of your mindful breath. I don't know about you, but when I'm breathing mindfully, my, my breath deepens. I mean, I, I've shared that many times. That's just the fact. But that gives me a sense of well-being, that I'm taking good care of myself. This is right. This is right for me to be breathing in and breathing out and to notice it. You know, it's a great relationship. You can just feel that. And so even though I gave you the ideas I have for today's class in terms of the intention, uh, you too will have your own intention. So take a moment now with your palms up on your lap, opening your hands purposefully. Maybe you even pull them, you know, bring your hands out in front of you. So they're not laying on your lap. They're more, it's more prominent that you've got your hands open to receive the benefits and the blessings of this practice today. And then what you need. So you make that inquiry within. Remember, this is for you and it's about you. So don't, don't give it a moment's thought that there's supposed to be some magic to this, that there's supposed to be a way that you can find your intention and it's supposed to be expressed in a particular way. It isn't. This is all about you and the way it, it is communicated within you. Is, is exactly right. It's exactly right. And that can, they, these intentions, you know, can be from A to Z, what we need, what we really desire for this day, for this practice.
I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. <clears throat> open your eyes and then bring your hands together and just rub the palms. It's just a way of connecting. The, the hands are uh, a part of the heart chakra, the fourth chakra. So we're, when we're rubbing our hands, we're kind of into opening the heart. And then rather than laying those warmed up hands onto your face, I want you to just turn your hands so that you're covering your face. You, you know, you're looking at your palms. So you don't have your eyes closed here. You've got your hands just holding them there. And just take a look. You know, your hands are equal, one hand and the other. They're the same size. They're the ear equal. So we're here in this equinox, looking at and being aware of the inner aspect of ourselves and the external aspect of ourselves. And look at them. Let's assign that, that kind of image that what we're looking at is the inner and the external and they're equal. And just hold that for a moment. Exhale completely. Let's extend those arms up. Palms will come together overhead. Inhale with me here, and then exhale as you bow into your own heart as we begin our practice. Inhale back up, and exhale. Let's go all the way around. All right, I'm going to, again, suggest we get started standing up. So if you'll come on up and have your chair situated near you like I've got mine. So you can, you can have it to the side, but you've got a lot of space to work with but you've got your chair here to hold on to for support if you need it. So I want you to start with just a little bit wider than hips distance apart with your feet and your feet feel straight. You know, you're not, you're, you're purposeful in bringing your feet to a parallel position to one another. And I want you to just start moving your hips. And as you do so, you're doing a little twisting so that when you come up, when you're to be kind to your knees, the twist will include lifting a foot up. See how I, when I turn, I got to get that foot up so the knee is properly taken care of. So we just start gently waking up, feeling your body. Try to keep your gaze at something about, you know, level of the horizon, maybe. You don't need to watch me do it. You know, you're just moving. And then you're going to start getting your arms going. Now find the rhythm of movement that seems to match up with your breathing so that the movement is very much related to how you inhale and how you exhale. And I'm not going to try to suggest now here, here's where you inhale. Just find your rhythm. You'll find it. Inhale and exhale and it is connected to the movement. Gently turning your head from side to side to include that in the twist, it's gentle, it's movement. But notice how when your arms are in motion, you start to rev up a little bit, don't you? It takes a little more energy in the body. You're gonna feel a little more cardio, if you will. We're gonna go higher. Keep breathing, finding that rhythm, keeping your drishti. So you're just aware that your eyes are fairly focused. You're not just letting them wander around. And then we're just sort of waving. So now we're more side to side. Feet can stay flat and we're more just side to side movements, not so much the twist. Next time you're twisting, or excuse me, <laughs> next time you're side to side bending over towards your right. Let's hold that over the head. So trying to get your arm to stretch over your ear. Let's make the drishti be the floor. So you're turning your head to look down and letting that other arm just slide down, you know, like the, end, the, like the seam of your pants, if you had that kind of thing, down the side of your leg. Breathing in, breathing out, feeling that long stretch through the side body. Take a sweeping motion to come out of that. We're going to switch sides over top of your ear. Drishti is at the floor, so you look down. You let your hand glide down your side of your leg. Breathing in, breathing out, big stretch.
take a sweeping motion to come out of that. And we're just gonna do some shoulder rolls, pulling back and down. And then change the direction of the shoulder roll. And again, make sure your feet are in a parallel position to each other. Let's take a, we're using our gliding hands down the pants, down the legs, all the way down, all the way down for our first forward fold. Your chair is right there. So if you would feel steadier by having a hand on the chair, please go ahead and just find the support you need. You're trying to surrender the weight of your head so that the very top of your head is stretching down toward the floor. And it's a ragdoll cup kind of thing. So you can just let your arms just dangle. And you know, if, if you're folding deeply enough, you might have your palms to the floor or the tops of your hands to the floor or somehow touching your feet. So let it be as it is. This is your first fold. You're allowing the back of the legs to stretch all through the length of the spine and you're folding in the midsection. That's the detox opportunity here. Let's bring our hands to our shins so we're below our kneecaps and we lift up a bit. Now you might look quickly at the screen, but don't stay there. Just get the idea of what I'm talking about and then just lift up halfway. Try to flatten out the back, see what you can do to get your shoulder blades where they feel like they're right. Back of the head, neck and spine in alignment. Fold one more time, just slide your hands back down your legs and fold again where you've got your eyes open and you're looking underneath yourself and you're in a forward fold where the top of the head is reaching toward the floor and you're kind of like a rag doll. When we get our hands to our legs, this time we're gonna be way into the thighs. Get as high up there as you can and then prop yourself up. So now you're in this L-shaped position. Get strong-armed, push your hands into your thigh bones, push your hands into those thighs and flatten out the back. So you feel like you've got a tabletop in the back body and you're up much more further up than you were the first go around. Settle into the breath in and out. Bring your body weight into your toes too. Doesn't it feel like you're pulling yourself way into your heels? See if you can even that out a little bit so you're into the toes as well. So the whole surface of your feet feels actively supportive. Can you spread your hands away from your body like wings would be? Tuck your throat, tuck your chin in towards your throat. Now pull the belly in, pull it in. That front waistline is pulling in toward the back waistline. You can do with that and still breathe. So breathe in and breathe out while you've got that nice strong core. And then let yourself come up, come on up and open up those arms wide. Breathe in, breathe out. Just find your breath, you know, the rhythm. And let's go into our vinyasa. Inhale is open. Exhale is close. And close means you're going to round your back body because we're going to do this as an alternative way to do the cat and the cow. So we're rounding through the back body. I want you to feel a lot of movement through your spine. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Close is rounding. Can't emphasize enough how important it is for you. Just keep your awareness where you are. You don't need to follow the movements that are available on the screen. You're much, much better served by paying attention to what you're feeling and what you're doing than what you might see me do. So I want you to really focus on this. You've done it many, many times. This is not new. This is a way of cat and cow opening the spine, feeling the flex and extension of your spine. A couple more. Let's open and hold it, turn the palms up. We're kind of in that T shape now. Rotate your arms so the palms are up and your thumbs are pointing behind you. Look on one side or the other. I want you to turn your head to look from hand to hand. Nice way to get into the awareness of how your neck is moving this morning, how it feels. Give it some breathing. If you're one part, one side is 
seems like it's tighter or needs more attention, then please give that side more attention. Palms will come together when we come back to a neutral position. Now we'll in, exhale down into our heart, inhale back up and then exhale a big wide kind of backstroke all the way out. Let's bring our feet together now. Feet together, hands are on our knees. We're gonna start circling around. So go in a clockwise direction. So this is a good way to get into the joints. You're in your knees, you're in your ankles, you're into your feet. Circling around. It's a balance too, isn't it? I mean, when you, whenever you bring your feet together, it's a little disorienting in terms of the balance. So maybe you're gonna have a hand on that chair so you feel steady. Let's change the direction of that circle. Notice how that feels different in your feet and in your ankles, even if it's ever so slight. You want to be really curious about that. If you're going a different direction, it should feel a little different. So you're trying to find that. One more forward fold. We're going to slide our legs right on, excuse me, slide your hands right on down your legs, all the way down, all the way down, ragdoll fashion. Let's give it two breaths in and out. One more in and out. Get your hands on your thighs. You're above your knees now. Bend your knees like crazy and lift yourself up. One more breath in and breath out and all the way back to standing. Shrug and release. Shrug and release. Shrug and release. Let's shake those legs out, give them a shake. And then let's stand near the chair so we've got our standing leg figured out. And we're gonna just get some movement going. I want you to just swing your leg, hand on the hip, following a particular path. You wanna sort of be hugging toward the midline with this swinging leg. So kind of keep it drawn in. Don't let your leg sailing out. We're just right through this midline track. Pull back on a bent knee. So when you're coming back, I want you to pull that foot back, back, back. Stand up nice and tall, pull it back. As you can, you're into the psoas muscle here. Pull it back, breathe in, breathe out. Both feet to the floor, shake that out. Now I want you to just start moving like this where you step away from the chair. I'm gonna have both hands on my hips, but you may choose to keep your hand on the chair. Step out, step out. Notice how I'm bending the knee. As I step out, I'm bending. Now take a pause when you're stepping out and you bend your knee. I want you to make sure when you bend your knee, it's going, the knee is going in the same direction as your toes do. And you know, what has to move if it's not is your foot. You don't try to move your knee. Your knee is the boss. You're gonna move your foot. So when you're stepping out, oh yeah, there, now that's when they're in alignment. Let's try it again. And just be aware that you want that knee to always go in the direction of your toes. And if you, and they alternate the, um, adjustment you would be making is to your foot so that that will accommodate that. Let's hold that now. Find your bent knee position and hold it. And let's extend the arms out. Another balance. Feel some grounding in the straight leg. For some reason, when we bend a knee, we kind of bring all our awareness in that direction. I want you to bring your body upright and bring some awareness into the standing leg, that straight leg, I should say, that straight leg, so that you're equal. You, you know, we're into that equinox thing, so that your body weight is equally distributed between both legs. Let's bring hand to the thigh, reach the other hand up to the sky. So the hand that matches up with your bent knee, that's what's reaching up. The hand that matches up with your straight leg, that's just laying down on your thigh, in the back of your thigh. 
Deepen the breath. Find the drishti. Does looking up feel good? To lift your face up and look up? Or would it be better to be more neutral? It's an inside job. You got to find that for yourself. But my, I'm just going to encourage you to find it, to pay attention to that sort of thing. Beautiful. Let's bring our hand back to our neutral position and we're going to step on back to center. And let's go back to our leg swings. Remember, follow that midline track. And we're going to just bend the knee and pull it back, pull that back. Can you bring your hands together while you pull back? One legged balance here. Good. Let's bring a hand back to the chair. And this time we're going to step forward and just hold that. So stepping forward. As you bend your knee, is it in track? Can you see how it tracks with your toes? If you can wean yourself from the chair, this would be a good time to do it. Hands at the hips might be a good way to start. Pull the belly in. Watch how when you pull, pull the belly in, it just seems to strengthen everything about your standing pose here. Palms come together at the heart. Really get your elbows to spread apart. So it's a firm connection with your hands at your heart center. Find your drishti and find your balance. Just feel the strength of your ankles and feet. Steady. Steady with the breath now. Inhaling and exhaling. All the way in, all the way out. Beautiful. This is our warrior one. So hands can either come to the waist and you step back or you get your hand on the chair to help you as you come back to your neutral position. Let's shake those legs. You might just turn the other way. I'm gonna move my chair. It's just a little easier for me to stay available to you by moving my chair. So we've got the other side now. We can start moving. Find your breath, keep your body upright. Maybe you find a drishti. Just keeps you more settled just by you know, focusing your eyes somewhere, feeling it in your body, more settled. You're more participative here. You know, you're more invested. We're gonna bend that knee and pull back. You're in your psoas, pulling back. Exhale completely. Both feet to the floor. We'll shake that a little bit. Then we're going to start stepping out. Stepping out. As soon as we start to really incorporating that bent knee, I want you to notice that when you do it, you want your knee to track with your toes. So you're going to step in a particular way to make that happen. The way your foot lands is what matters here. The way your foot lands so that Oh yeah, now when I bend my knee, I'm right into that same track, the correct track. A few more, stay with it. You can always hold on to the chair to steady. Your drishti is another way of steadying, so you just focus. And we're gonna hold it, take a big step, hold it, divide your body weight to both legs. Extend the arms out. Let's, let's, this time, let's turn palms up. I'm not sure we did it that way the first time, but that's a good way to come in. Pull the belly in nice and strong. Divide your body weight. Both legs want to hold you up. Settle in with the breath in and out. In and out. The straight leg is going to have that hand is going to just rest on the thigh. The other hand, the bent knee side, that hand is reaching to the sky. Try looking up.
Breathe all the way in and out, in and out. Let's come back to the extended arms. Hands are at the waist and maybe you can just bring yourself back to center. And we're going back to the swinging leg, flex and extension of the hip. So I just love having the chair right there in case I needed it. Sometimes you just need it for a moment, just need to touch it and it helps you get your balance back. And again, we're gonna step, pull back, pull back. Deepen the breath. Take that same leg now and step forward. Take a big step forward. Notice that when you bend your front knee that it's in line with your toes. The bent knee is going the same direction as your toes go. Pull the belly in, shoulders are back and down. Both feet are flat to the floor. You want that back heel to be grounded. Palms come together at the heart. We're gonna really push into the hands and raise your elbows up a little more. Find your drishti and find your full breath cycle. That's it, stay with it. Full breath in and out. I know you're doing this really well. I can just tell we're just really in sync. Let's try a little something special this time. Inhale up right here. Exhale at the heart. Inhale up and exhale, go all the way around. Now either hold on to your chair or maybe hands are at your hips as you Bring yourself back to neutral. Let's shake those legs. Let's actually shake the body. So not only the legs, but all the limbs. We want all four of those limbs just shaking out. I'm gonna to turn toward the chair just for some stability for myself, but I want you want, what I'm focusing on is the step behind me. So you're stepping your leg behind you, behind you. And then hold it, bring it back there, get both feet flat, hold it, and then turn into a little twist here. Turn one way, turn yourself toward that back foot. You're turning in the direction of your back foot. And then bring your upper body more neutral, so just square away. And then see if you can bring your hands away from the chair and you're just holding that finding your center of gravity when your feet are kind of goofed up, you know, they're not where they usually are. Feel the feet, feel the ball ones of the big toe, the inner part of your heels. Let's get both hands on the chair again and bring yourself back to neutral. And then let's just switch to the other side. So the other foot steps back, steps way back. Just follow your body's guidance, what you need to do, how you need to turn yourself, what you need to hold on to. Find the breathing. Let's hold it now. We're gonna step back and hold that. Now we turn toward that back foot. So that's the way we're turning our upper body is toward the back foot. Well, the inner thighs are squeezing each other a little bit. I'm just noticing for myself. As I turn toward that back foot, try to keep your head neutral. I just don't want any strain in the neck. So if you've got a, a nifty way you're holding this and your neck feels just fine, that's great. That's great. And then let's unwind the upper body a little bit. And now just hold it. Just keep your legs. In that position, feel the feet. There's a bend in the front knee. Let's make sure you got that front knee sort of bent. And then palms come together. See if we can bring palms together at the heart center. 
Inhale up. Exhale, heart. We bow here at the Guru Dave. Up. All the way around. Both hands on the chair. We could bring our feet back to their neutral position and we're going to shake that out again. And this time we're going to have a little hula hoop. So let's circle around through the hips, real exaggerated. Let's get a real exaggerated hula hoop going. Let's change the direction of that circle. Or, you know, that you're following your body's lead. What if I have you change direction? You're thinking, not yet. Nope, I got to work that out on that side. Then that's what you do. Last standing pose before we have a seat. So let's just bring ourselves to the position of that high back chair and stretch it out into that long stretch of the forward fold that it's called an extended forward fold. Arms, are, get your arms as close to your head as you can. I want you to feel your arms right into your ears. Try not to put too much weight into your hands and arms. Bring your body weight into the legs, into the thighs, into the hips. Breathe in, breathe out. You feel that tabletop effect of your back body. You feel the lengthening of the spine as you pull your tailbone back toward the wall behind you. And you let the top of the head, the crown of the head, kind of extend it toward the chair. So in both directions, you're feeling expansion. Deepen the breath. Start to come back up, take your time walking yourself toward the chair. We're gonna do some shoulder rolls. We're gonna shrug and release, shrug and release, shrug and release, good. All right, let's bring ourselves now into our seated position. So if you have a block, it's a good time to get it. I'm gonna put my block between my thighs. Line up your feet so they're parallel. You can really feel that and see that. And of course, you're not using the backrest, but you feel really, really very well situated and supported by the chair seat. Take a moment to just breathe in and breathe out. Get yourself, you know, oriented and you feel like you're really caught up with the breathing. Feeling that connection of your inner thighs to the block just, just enough that you know, you're not dropping the block, but you're not squeezing it so much that it's causing a problem, that it feels like a gripping. It shouldn't feel like a grip. It should feel like strength, like engagement. So see if you can find that balance. Let's start it off like we always do, inhaling up, bowing into ourselves on the exhalation, inhaling back up. When we come down with the arms, they're right alongside the chair's frame. We'll pull back and we'll find a cow and a cat here. So start with your cow, let your chest lift up. Shoulder blades draw toward each other. Hands are very close to the chair frame. That'll help you with the shoulder blades. Keep your head neutral so the chin is, you know, your jawline is parallel to the floor. Just neutral. Feel that in your body and through the back, into the spine. I don't know about you, but when we start standing and we're doing the kind of the active movement that we did, um, then everything else feels um, so much more spacious and so much more um, available or, or uh, accessible. Let's round through the back body and find that C-shaped curve of the spine. Really get to the midsection. Your shoulders, by the way, are over your hips. I've been doing this, you know, live with people in class here where I live. And I've noticed that this is often done and they pull themselves forward. So I've had to really change my languaging because I want you to make sure your shoulders stay right in line with your hips. So that's a movement of the spine that rounds your back. It's not that you're letting your hands pull you forward. That, that doesn't achieve that at all. So if, you're, if you find that a little bit challenging that it's kind of got you messed up, get your hands on your lap. This floating arms is just an option. Let's round, I mean, excuse me, let's come back up and find the extension of the spine, our cow pose, hands are real close to the chair frame and we're gonna exhale now as we begin our vinyasa. 
Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, extension of the spine. Exhale, the flexion of the spine. So try to exaggerate your movements and exaggerate your breath. Get some big breaths going on here. Let's come to a neutral position. I'm gonna lose the block. I want you to open up your feet a little bit wider. I got my block just sort of tucked under. And then let's glide our hands down our legs and fold forward. Lay yourself down. See if your armpits could maybe fit over your kneecaps and look down and underneath yourself, a forward fold. Breathe big belly breaths here. This is the detox factor. Big belly breaths. Keep your bottom on the chair. Weight of your head, surrender it, let it go. So your neck feels like it's a little vacation here, just let it go. Big belly breaths. Jump your hands to your thighs and start to come up halfway. Squeeze your elbows in towards your waistline. Tuck your chin in towards your throat so you now you have your back body in that diagonal line. Neutralize your head. I know what you, we just want to stick our face out there, don't we? Kind of pull it in so it feels neutral. Back of the head, neck, spine seem to be in alignment. Spread your arms away from you like the wings we like to create. Push into your feet. Feel the perineum. That's the floor of the pelvis. Feel how it can kind of float above the chair seat just ever so slightly. You feel it. Push your feet to the ground really strong. Pull the belly in. Pull the belly in. Breathe in, breathe out. You can do all that at the same time, I promise. Excellent, let's bring those arms all the way up. Palms are gonna to come together. Exhale, heart. Inhale up, turn your hands to face forward. We're just gonna move through the shoulder socket now, just through the shoulder socket. Lift straight arms up, straight arms up and down. Feel the grounding of your feet and the stability of your legs. So it supports this movement, it's easy. It's, it's valuable though. Lift up and hold, keep going back as far as you can till there's a stop sign and then there's no more movement, but you've got to the stop sign. Pulling those hands back, straight arms, straight, straight. Feel that now, feel it as you breathe in and out. We'll release it. We're going to push back. Same kind of deal. We're pushing back, pushing back. There's a stop sign, surely. Arching through the back body. Turn palms up as we come into the T. Our spine will just neutralize. Inhale up. Exhale, heart. Up. All the way around. Good. Let's start lifting up the legs. Lift them up. I want you to get your legs up. Get them up. Now your spine won't be perfect, but keep it you know, in your mind's eye. Keep it in your awareness that you're trying to keep yourself lifted. What you don't want to do is just sink, that you just you know, cave in. So keep yourself lifted up so you can get those legs up. And then get one up and hold it. Let's get the shin is parallel to the floor as we can. So you're lifting up, I'll just stay in this kind of angle so you know what I'm saying. So you're lifting up, not just getting your knee up, but getting the whole leg up. So you're getting that lower leg to lift up. So your shin is kind of parallel to the floor. Now move it in and out. Couple more, you know what you could also do is get your hands on the underside of your thigh. That's a big help. One more, you're doing great. Let's hold, let's everybody get a hold of the inner side of that thigh and pull it way in, pull it way in and keep your heel up, keep lifting so that your shin is more or less, like I said, parallel to the floor. That's a good one. Lift up the spine now. Spread your toes on that foot, spread the toes of that foot that's up in the air and then soften it, spread the toes. 
and then soften the foot. And one more time, we're gonna spread, try to spread, stretch through the foot and soften it. And then we're gonna bring that foot to the floor and just kind of tap, tap, tap on the balls of your foot. That stimulates the uh, reflexology points of that ball of the foot, which is your respiratory system. It's for your lungs health. Nice way to access that. Feet to the floor, take a pause, whatever you need, catching up with your breath. We're gonna do that leg lift. You know, just kind of get them both going, warm up the body, but then just get it up there. Keep your spine up and upright. Hold on to the chair. I, I think that, I, you know, is really helpful. Lift up now. Lift up. Remember, we're trying to get the lower, I mean, the shin bone up. So maybe your hands under your thigh is a great solution for you. So you can just start moving that foot forward and back while you got your leg lifted up. Find your rhythm of breath. Your legs as high up as you know how to do it. Let's do a couple more. We're gonna hold that thigh, pull it way in. While we've got it pulled way in, your foot's way up in the air. Spread your toes, then soften the foot. Spread the toes open and then soften the foot. Do that a couple more times. Good, soften the foot. Pull that knee, that knee and thigh into you for a second. Yep, and then let's release it all to the floor. Shake that out by just tap, tap, tap on the balls of the feet. Coming back to your mountain pose. Now make sure you feel really supported by the chair. Palms are alongside the chair's frame, but the palms are facing forward. I should say hands are alongside. Palms are facing forward. Lift up the chest, lift up the chest. Now get the neutral position of your head. Feel your feet to the earth. Imagine that block between your thighs. Imagine that so you can feel the engagement of your legs properly. Deepen the breath. Feel the centering, the grounding here. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And just imagine the earth of your body, the earth nature of your body. The earth of your body now is connecting to the body of the earth. That's grounding. That's right relationship with you and this earth, this earthly being that we are. Exhale all the way out, let's flutter the eyes open. We've got one more thing to do before we move into our relaxation. We're gonna use that block right between our feet, and I want you to open up your feet a little wider, maybe a little bit wider than the legs of your chair. And we're gonna fold forward and back and forward and back. I'm not real sure the height of the block. So I put it on the highest side. I'm not sure I'm gonna stay with that, but I wanted to start with that just to see and know that you can make the same adjustment You know that I, that I might find myself doing. So the next time you come forward, you might want to watch me just for a second. I want you to turn your head. So instead of your nose coming, you know, facing the ground here, you're turning your head so the ear faces the ground. So I want you to turn your head. Ear is facing that block or facing the ground. Turn your head. So now the ear has kind of changed positions from what your nose used to do. You get the idea? Let's hold it. And this is our fold. We're going to bring... Your, if your right ear is facing the floor now, then your right hand is gonna to come to the block. For sure, I'm gonna go with a lower level. So I'm putting my hand on the block and I'm facing my ear. So same, same hand, right and right, or left and left, is facing, either pressing into the hand, into the block, or your ear is facing it. That's a twist. The upper arm, 
Left arm, if, it, if you've got your right hand on the block, it'll be your left arm lifting up. Now find a full breath cycle. Remember to keep your head positioned so the ear is shining right down in toward your hand. Breathe in, breathe out. Lift as much as that upper arm will allow you to lift up and lengthen and straighten if you can. Just notice throughout your body, make a scan. What's going on? Where do I feel this? Where can I kind of connect to my body? What's helpful for me? Let's bring that upper hand down back to your waist or to your thigh. Turn your head so you're looking at the floor. Both hands jump to the thighs. You're in that halfway position where you're in a diagonal line of the back body and come back upright. Reset your body, reset, move around, find a nice reset for yourself. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start slowly warming up the body by simply bending forward and back. And we're noticing how when we come forward, it's our face or our nose that goes forward and back. So we're facing the floor, facing the block. Then we're gonna turn our head so the ear is facing the block. Turn your head now. So you're looking over and your ear, uh, I got my left ear now facing the block and coming up and down. Let's hold it in the folded position. So we're fo folded forward. Now this is where the hand comes to the block. So left hand, left ear, that's what I'm doing, but you'll just alter, you'll just switch it if it's different for you. Same side, left, left, or right, right, is facing the block or on the block. And then we're gonna lift up that upper hand, up the upper arm, up. And feel the twist or create the twist. Different for me on this side. The other side I found kind of easily accessible. The side, there's, there's definitely some resistance in my body that wasn't on the other side. No problem, it's just an awareness. So really wanna breathe into it, see, see if I can calm down the resistance part and find a little more ease. Deepen the breath, stay with your body, don't be looking at the screen, no reason to do that. As we unwind, let's get that top arm down. Your hand can just be at the thigh. Turn your head to look down. So now you've turned your head so you're facing the floor. Both hands on the thighs. You got your elbow squeezed into your waist. You're in that halfway diagonal line of the back body. This is a good time. Last time here, let's push the feet to the ground. Push, push, push. And lift the perineum away from the chair. It's slight. It's not a big motion, but it's definitely toning your perineum, super great for those, the strength of your abdominal wall, the strength of all of the, uh, and the support, I should say, of all of the organs that rely on your toned perineum. Let's relax now, let the body just relax back into the chair seat. We'll come, bring ourselves all the way up, all the way up to sit to our seated position. Let's just Reset the body, whatever that might look like for you. I'm gonna move the block out of the way. I mean, you can put your uh, feet wherever you'd like them. I'm gonna keep them a little bit further apart, not quite so no much hips distance apart because I want that center space. I'm gonna try a really um, powerful breath practice that I like, it's called the Kali breath. It's done in three parts. The inhale is, is done in three parts and your arms move. It's inhale, 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 exhale down. So it goes like that. Inhale. So snuff it up through your nose or take the inhale however you can. Those were all inhalations. Exhale down. In, in some more, in some more. Exhale it down. In, in, in. Last time. In, in, all the way down. Let's do that again, just all the way down. As I talk about cleansing, just cleanse yourself out. There we go. And then reset your body. 
Let your body start making your way where you start scooting yourself back into the chair's backrest. You start finding your way into a relaxation practice. Now, if there's something your body is needing, we didn't do something that you always like doing, do it, get up and do it. There's something that I didn't get to, or we just, I didn't choose for today's practice that you just really enjoy doing. And you can feel that your body is getting stronger and you just wanna do it, do it. This is the time. We'll all make our way to the seat of the chair and to the backrest of the chair. So we're leaning back into that, but be sure you get your hips as close to that backrest as you can. That's a lot better for your spine. If you can get your hips back there, <clears throat> it's gonna keep your shoulders in alignment with your hips better. And then let your legs be as they wanna be. So you're not trying to muscle your way into that, that midline energy uh, that I often draw you into. This is not a time for that. This is a time for you to just let your body be as your body is. So if that is where your body lands, that's fine. That's beautiful. But if it isn't, this is the idea is we're just allowing our body to settle, release, relax very organically. And, you know, we're just meeting ourselves right where we are, taking that all in. Maybe closing, as you close your eyes, you bring to mind the intention you set for practice. And perhaps you bring to mind the spring cleaning intention that I set. And maybe perhaps the idea of the hands in front of you that I uh, started us with is just as an image and a way to be aware of the equinox within our body, inner awareness and external awareness. Same. Same attention, same worthiness, same importance in our way of being. Try to breathe in and out through your nose if you can. And let's use an image of breath that you can feel your breath starting at the floor of the pelvis and coming all the way up your spine to the crown of your head. And the exhale will follow the same path back down the spine. So see if you can connect those dots, if you will, the, the root of the spine all the way up to the crown of the head. Exhale back down through the spine to its root. So you just stay with that image deep within you, letting the breath follow that path. It will have an effect, hopefully it will have an effect of equalizing your inhale and your exhalation. So bring that you know, to your awareness that that's, that's part of the effect we're looking for is that your inhale is equal to the exhale in length and depth. Soften the mouth, relax any tension you find in your face, in your neck, shoulders. Remember that sweet spot that I reminded you of at the beginning where we hold tension in our body. Everybody seems to have a favorite space. And we, we just, again, visit that, release, relax, offer some compassion, understanding to that part of your body. And clean it out, our spring cleaning day. We're gonna clean out that tension for today. I like the reading from today. I, I know I've shared with you the promise of a new day is a daily reading I do for inspiration and grounding. This one is today's reading and I thought it was perfect. Starts with a quote from Abigail Adams, a woman ahead of her time, strong and educated. 
You must remember that an arbitrary power is like most other things, which are very hard, very liable to be broken. Sway is built into tall buildings so they won't break. Rigid structures are never as strong as flexible ones. The strongest minds are also the most nimble, the most ready to change and to include new information. We only see one little slice of reality. How can we know what's right for others? Our spirits will be strong to the extent that we can keep them flexible, ready to incorporate new energies and to make fresh associations. To be flexible doesn't mean to be wishy-washy or indecisive. Often people who refuse to grow will say they want to remain flexible. But one can be flexible and still have strong direction, generosity, and broad tolerance for others' growth. What cannot bend may break. I'll respect the truth of your living, growing spirit. Your reality can be your gift to me. Rigid structure are never as strong as flexible ones. Feel the softness of the belly. The softness of your limbs. The smoothness of your breath in and out. I'll bet your breath has returned to a normal rhythm. You may no longer be following the pathway of your spine. That's all lovely. Whatever it is, is where you are. Bring particular awareness to the exhalation for the sweetness of that. So you can really experience that release of the exhalation, the ease that accompanies that in your body. Let's all take an inhale through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth like, ah. Nose and breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale, ah. One more time like that. Just a cleansing breath, inhale. And exhale. Let's come forward on the chair a little bit so your feet are back to the floor and you're much more upright. You're much more aware of your long and strong spine. Let's sync up our breath one last time. Inhale up, palms will come together overhead. As we exhale, we bring our hands to the heart. Let's take a pause there. Press your palms together. Lift your elbows up a little bit more so it's more intentional. Here at your heart, bowing in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Just bowing in to the teacher within and to the creator. Let's take that inhale back up. As we take our exhale now, this is where we get to shine. We get to spread this beautiful energy throughout our communities. Ah. Palms come together at the heart of the Anjali Mudra. We bow to ourselves. We bow to one another. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste, my friends. Thank you, Julie. You're Perfect. welcome. Thanks, Julie.